Hi, Michael Canellis for Green Tech Media here with one of the ugliest words in technology, batteries. Batteries look simple, but they remain one of the toughest jobs in the technology world. Why did notebooks start exploding in 2006? Back home, the Reserve Bank put up interest rates. Batteries. Why do electric cars cost over $100,000? Batteries. Battery chemistry is just not easy. And it's not like anyone's ever gonna say, you make batteries? Wow, I'm so turned on. Which is what makes Powergenics one of the more interesting clean tech companies out there. It's come up with a nickel zinc rechargeable battery that packs more power and weighs less than a traditional rechargeable nickel battery that you might buy in the store today. It's also safer and cheaper than lithium batteries. It's actually nickel zinc. Okay. So uh, a kissing cousin to nickel metal hydride and NICAD, the positive electrode is nickel and the negative electrode is zinc. This is a um, nickel metal hydride pack, 19.2 volts. And what's in this pack are these sub C cells. And this sub C format is an industrial format and they just go all around. Over the years there's been various attempts to commercialize it but nobody has really found kind of like the magic formula. We did a couple of things. First of all we had a, a breakthrough invention in the electrolyte. So we put additives in the electrolyte that stabilize the zinc electrode. So that probably, and we have a lot of patent and intellectual property around that. The second thing that we did is we, we put additives into the composition of the electrodes, both the positive and the, the negative electrodes. And then through cell design and mechanical design, through the, the separator material, and actually even through the manufacturing processes, all of those things come together to stabilize the zinc. But the breakthrough and the most important thing we've done is in the area of electrolyte. The promise of rechargeable zinc batteries has been around since Thomas Edison. Unfortunately, zinc batteries typically degrade rapidly after a few charges. Squiller's not exactly telling how his company, Powergenics, is doing this, but he says they've solved the problem. So exhibit A, this is a, um, a good old flashlight and it's got nickel metal hydride in it. And it's gonna be a little bit hard to see, but you can see the beam is a certain brightness. And we have exhibit B, and this is a flashlight with nickel zinc. Oh, you're, okay, you're yeah. right. And they're the same age and you're not like... Same age, we're not playing games. Powergenics is actually one of a number of battery companies trying to overturn the market. Z-Power, which used to be called Zinc Matrix Power, is also touting a zinc battery, but it's aiming at notebooks and utilities. Meanwhile, in the Boston area, A123 Systems and Boston Power have come up with lithium-based batteries that have a lot of the same characteristics. A123 is aiming at power tools and cars, while Boston Power is aiming at notebooks. Powergenics is initially going to target power tools and battery cells, the kind you see in stores. They started mass manufacturing in March, and in a couple of months, you'll start seeing zinc-based batteries on the shelves in stores. Who are partners? We, um, we've signed agreements um, with a, uh, um, a large company called Tocad, and they're going to be um, distributing and, and putting product into power tool and consumer AA channels. Uh, we've signed agreements with Original Power. Um, they make lawn and garden equipment under different, better, well-known brand names, Craftsman, Weed Eater, other... Oh, so they have like the Weed Whacker and they'll have like the yeah. battery in there, the power of zinc. <clears throat> right, exactly, exactly. Um, we've signed agreements um, with a large um, electric bike and electric scooter manufacturer in China, a company called Power Eagle, one of the largest in China. Those products will be hitting the streets uh, at the end of the year, uh, very beginning of next year. And um, uh, that's about that, all that over, multi, over three years is about $75 million of supply agreements signed. Squiller, in fact, drove up from San Diego for our interview and a car powered on his batteries. VCs just put $30 million into the company, and over the next year, we're going to start to see if they can make it or not. I'm Michael Canellis for Green Tech Media.